Hey everybody, it's Amy from Magic and Light Collection. You can find all of our products at www.magicandlightcollection.com. I'd like to show you all another technique with the Magic Light Action Pack. This Action Pack is really great for finishing your images with a very dramatic light and dark look. So um, I have this image right here and I've already cleaned it up using the Vintage Spring Action Set. I use Spring Clean as well as Earth and um, you want to make sure that you are cleaning up your images before you use the Magic Light Action Pack. This is really for finishing things up or adding a lot of drama. And so I'm going to go ahead and get started. The first thing that I want to do is, is see where the light source is coming from. And to me it looks like the light is coming across from the right because there are highlights here, here you can see a little bit on this tree on her hair and then the shadows are here on the left side so that tells me that the light is coming from the right. I'm going to go ahead and add in the darkness first and I'm going to choose darkness all around for this one. So I'm going to select it I'm going to press play. So you can see that that adds a nice darkness all around the image and leaves the center pretty um, clear of the darkness. I think that I'd like a tiny bit more on the left side because, since the light source is going to be coming from the right. So I'm going to choose the darkness left and press play. And you can see that it adds quite a bit over here to the left side. It's way too much so I'm going to take down the opacity of the entire layer until it looks about right. That looks good to me. So I'm just going to click it on and off just to be sure what's going on. So it looks like it is a little bit too heavy in her hair right here and also in her hair. So I'm going to choose the white layer mask and make sure that I have my brush tool selected with a black foreground color. I'm going to set my brush opacity to around 60%. And then I'm just going to take off some of that darkness with my brush. If you feel like you've taken off too much darkness, switch to the white foreground color and you can put it right back on. Okay, so let's check it again. That looks pretty good to me. Her little arm here is just a little bit too dark so I'm going to brush a little bit more of that darkness off. I'm going to go ahead and check the darkness all around layer and see if that's affecting their hair at all. It is affecting her arm so using the same process I'm just going to take that off of her arm and check it again. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's see the before and after. This is the before. And this is after we've added darkness all around and darkness left. Okay, so next I'd like to add in the light layers. You have a couple of different options. As far as actions go, there are a couple magic light actions. So if I wanted to have some light coming from the right, I could play magic light right. And press play and then I have some light coming from the right. That would be way too much so I would just take it down a little bit. That's one option and I actually think that looks pretty good but the light in here is so directional that I feel like I need to add in the spotlight. So I'm going to delete that layer and I'm going to put in first a lens flare and then the spotlight. So the first thing I'm going to do is navigate to the area that I am keeping my overlays. Here they are. And I'm going to choose light flare. So that will place it on the, in the image. I'm going to press the check mark to make sure it puts on, stays on there. And then I'm going to choose the move tool. 
I'm going to take this light flare and move it to an area that I think is reasonable for the light to be coming from. And I want to say that it's probably coming from up pretty high. So now I'm just going to make it bigger and put it right here. This is really just a general guide so you can use these in endless combinations in your images. So what I like to do is create a path for the light. So the light flare, this light flare layer, I'm going to put on overlay. So I'm going to find my blending modes and choose overlay. So you see this creates a little bit of a path for the light. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is duplicate the light flare layer. Duplicate layer. Okay. And I'm going to put this one on screen. So this creates a little bit of a hazy sunlight rather than a, just a path where the light is. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I want to go ahead and add in the spotlight. So I'm going to go to File, Place, and I'm going to choose Spotlight. So you can see that this comes on with a black background on it. The only blending mode that is going to work with this is screen. So you'll need to put this on screen. Okay, so using your move tool, now you're going to move the spotlight in the direction of the light. And you'll kind of just have to play with it to make sure that you're getting it right. I'm kind of going to do a couple skinny ones and then go back and take some of it off. So I'm going to duplicate this spotlight. And now I have a second one. That looks kind of interesting. So I'm going to choose the second one right here as though it's coming through the trees. When it's on screen like this, you kind of have to play with it. And I'm just going to turn it a little. And make it a little bit skinnier. Okay, so that looks good to me. If you want to intensify the effect, you can always duplicate the layers and leave them on top. So this is, a, this is pretty strong, but I actually think I'm going to leave it that way so that I get this nice darkness in between and it looks like a, um, a, a beam of light. Obviously, um, it's, the, the light is going to likely be behind these branches, and so you'll want to just kind of erase a little bit. And let me just show you. With the, using the eraser tool, I'm going to click and this message is going to come up. Just press OK. And then I'm going to choose a low-ish opacity brush for the eraser. And I'm going to get in here and probably just try to take a little bit of that light off of here. So you want to make sure which light is on there and it looks like it's this first spotlight press OK and I'm just going to take it off a little bit and it looks like the light flare is on there so I'm probably going to take a little bit of that off as well Press OK. I might go down a little bit lower on the opacity. We don't want really harsh lines on this. I 
think that all of the other branches are probably okay. Now, my second issue is that the light is really kind of coming from in front of them. And so on this portion of her hair in the shadows, it probably would not appear there. And so I wanna take some of that off. And actually it doesn't look like any of the overlays are affecting that portion. So that's good, that's fine. So that looks pretty good to me. If I wanted to take it another step, I would go ahead and add another overlay. So go to File in Place and I'll choose Amber Light. Okay, so you can see that this will place Amber Light over the entire image. If you're working in Elements, it might make it a lot smaller for you, but just resize it and make it bigger and fit it over the entire image. Now you can see that the amber light is much heavier on this side and much lighter on this side. I want to have the heaviest part where the light is. So I'm just gonna resize this. I do want it to fit over the entire image this time. Sometimes you might not, sometimes you might. It all just depends. <laughs> So I think for this, I'm going to put it on soft light after I make sure that it's moved on there. So I'm going to put it on soft light. And you can see that it gives it a nice, warm, soft look. If I wanted to make a more intense, if I wanted to make a more intense effect, I could put it on overlay. I'm so sorry if y'all hear my dog barking. I actually like it best on overlay. It gives it a nice warm sunny look. If I wanted to make a nice hazy look then I could put amber light on screen. Okay so that's a hazy sunny day. I really liked it on overlay so I'll switch it back and I think that that looks pretty good to me. So let's look at the before. This is where we started. This is where we are now. That's a pretty dramatic change. And um, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. You can find all of our products at www.magicandlightcollection.com.